Hey, what's up everybody? It's Timothy here with another Cons of Tarkir draft. Before I go and pick a card out of this pack, talk about stuff, I do want to say thank you to those people who commented on the previous Cons draft. Um, seems like people really enjoyed watching the format, and I enjoyed playing it, so I figured we'd crank out another one before it goes offline. Um, with that being said, let's go and look at our pack. Our rare's not really good. Um, it lets you basically filter cards and set up Delve, but... As I mentioned last time, you can only have so many Delve cards in your deck before they conflict with each other, and Become Immense, not great. Hoot and Mandrills, I'm not really looking at. I think Death Frenzy might be my pick here. Death Frenzy gives everything minus two, minus two, and gains you a life for each creature that dies the turn you play. Debilitate and Injury is also pretty good, but in a world full of morphs, I remember Death Frenzy being pretty good. There's also Wooly Loxdon, Ponyback Brigade, Mardu Charm's pretty good. Instant speed thought seize or um, raise the alarm or deal four to a creature. Quite good, but three colors to start off with. Committing yourself to Mardu. Ooh, Trail of Mystery. I love this card. Uh, I think this isn't an amazing card, but it definitely leads to much cooler decks. So what it lets you do is anytime you cast a morph, you get to uh, tutor up a basic and put it on the battlefield tapped. Uh, oh, I guess you only get to put it in your hand. And then... Um, your permanents get plus two plus two whenever they're flipped face up. So Trail of Mystery leads to five color morph decks quite a bit. Not really a combo with Death Frenzy, but definitely a cool card to draft around. Maybe not even the best card in this pack, since this does lead you down a really weird path. But it's a card I always enjoyed playing um, for the fun value rather than the pure power level. Monastery Swift Spear is an extremely overrated card. It's playable, but it's not actually good in limited or in this format. And then, like, Alabaster Cure and Watcher of the Roost are both good. Hoot and Mandrills, Whirler Adept. Summit Prowler is surprisingly good in this format, too, especially these cards in Teamer, as we saw last time. I'm going to take Trail of Mystery and look to draft a bunch of morphs, if that's what's handed to us, of course. I would not mind drafting the five-color deck here. Uh, Ride Down is very nice if you end up red-white, but it doesn't match either of the cards that uh, we first picked. You might remember this from Eldritch Moon, I believe, if you're a newer player. Uh, I'm going to take Ifrit Weapon Master out of this pack. Could see Rugged Highlands. These dual lands go way up in value when you end up drafting the four or five color decks. Treasure Cruise is also a nice one, but extremely overrated as well. If you only have one or two Delve cards, Treasure Cruise goes up in value. But Weapon Master is 5-mana um, to morph, and it morphs into a 4-3 First Striker, which is already going to kill something mid-combat most of the time, but then it gives another creature you control plus 3 plus 0, so it lets you like trade up on tokens and stuff like that. Also, probably just the strongest card in the pack next to like Ride Down and Treasure Cruise, so I'm pretty happy taking any of these three-color morphs that fit with our Trail of Mystery. Oh wow, Ice Feather Aven's another one I remember loving. It's a bounce spell when you morph it. And it's a 2-2 fire that you can just pay for 2 mana. Right of the Serpent's a fine removal spell. And then we've also got 2 really good um, morphs here. 3 good morphs in this pack. Note that there's a morph, uh, a common morph for each of these color combinations in the set. And they all cost 5 to morph up and 6 to cast. So you get a discount for morphing them up. Absent Guide is really strong. I think I'm going to take Ice Feather Aven though. Um... Maybe Weapon Master is a bit of a stretch because this does lend itself a little bit better towards like Sultai colors or Abzan colors. Since Weapon Master doesn't actually share any color with Trail of Mysteries, but I'm going to take Ice Feather Aven. Pretty decent card. Feet of Resistance is busted. Not actually busted. Wow, this pack's good. See, this is why I like cons. You just get such a high like amount of actual playables. There are some morphs here. Monastery Flock, Sadisi's Pet, but they're not great. I think all of these first four cards are better than just taking one of the rando morphs. Feet of Resistance is the best card in the pack. Maybe behind Arrow Storm. And then there's also Water Whirl, Instant Speed Bounce to Creatures, which is okay in this format. There's also Arrow Storm, deal four to any target, or deal five if you have Raid. I think I'm going to take Feet of Resistance. I'm not shaping up for the mana to be very good in this, pa in, in this uh, deck, though. I could see taking, like, Water Whirl and stick into soul tie colors but feet is i think the best card in the pack all right there's a mind swipe i don't really like this card um i played it last time and it was fine but it's not great war behemoth is an okay morph but i'm gonna take tranquil cove blue white fixin seems pretty important if i'm gonna be playing all of these cards in my deck so tranquil cove it is followed by 
Singing Bell Strike. I wish there was a slightly better morph than Inoc Tracker in this pack, because I would take that. But Bell Strike gets you through the early game. Also locks down some late game creatures. Highland Game is a card. These two are some of the most unplayable cards in the set. Firehoof Cavalry and Lens of Clarity, both really bad. Trap Essence again. I guess nobody wants the Soul Tie cards. Monastery Flock it is. This one's a little bit awkward because it doesn't actually progress any sort of game plan. But if we're going to be drafting this sort of deck, then I like Monastery Flock. And it blocks pretty well. Dutiful Return, I remember being pretty bad in this format. Those type of effects tend to be good lately. Yeah, see, we got Sultai Ascendancy back. That can't be a good sign. Salt Road Patrol coming back is kind of surprising. This card's pretty good. There's also Wee Fate, which is playable, but I don't really love it. I just take Salt Road Patrol. Don't really like Sultai Ascendancy. It's not even a real huge payoff for being a three-color deck. And I don't want Banners. Banners are bad even if we're trying to do fancy stuff. Uh, Yeah, Salt Road Patrol it is. Uh, Summit Prowler's nice. Not really red, though. Let's see what this looks like real quick. I'm going to take Summit Prowler out of this pack. The rest of the cards are pretty pretty bad. Crippling Chill is fine. Looks like we've got like a Jess guy set up here. Maybe just like Splash and Green. Might not even play Trail of Mystery. And then like possibly Splash Ice Feather Aven. Not play Death Frenzy. Like if we cut Death Frenzy, then we've got all Jess guy cards here. Ice Feather Aven, which can be cast face down, and then we don't have to play Trail of Mystery. So if I sort by mana cost, remember all my morphs are castable on three, which is a great thing about this format. If I cut Trail of Mystery, then boom, I got Jeskai, potentially Splash, and an Ice Feather Aven, and I've already got an on-color land, so maybe that's what we're going to end up looking like, but we'll see. Jeskai tends to be spell-heavy. Like, Summit Prowler is not as good in Jeskai as it is in Teamer, where the four power really matters. But a lot of times you overlap <laughs> Barrage of Boulders. Nice one. I like this card. It was really good for us last time. Does work with Summit Prowler. Works with Ifrit Weapon Master. Could work with Salt Road Patrol. Also just destroys the little goblin decks. Things like Ponyback Brigade. It's a nice little out to have against those sort of cards. Was really good last time against Hordling Outburst. Yeah, so we'll have to see how the, the green plan... It doesn't look like I'm actually going to be five colors. Sadisi's pet I like. We've got this little package here of potential five-color nonsense. But it depends. If, if we just open, like, all good Jeskai cards, we're going to stick to Jeskai. We could shift to Sultai, too. Like, if I cut these four cards, then I've got a Sultai build here. So we'll see what ends up being available for us. As it is, I think I'm looking at something like this. Ooh, Master of Pearls is really nice. Oh, God, I love this set. This set is fantastic. So Master of Pearls, awesome morph. It turn gives all of your creatures plus two, plus two when it flips face up. Arc Lightning's nice. It usually kills a morph and then deals one to the opponent. And the dream, of course, is killing a morph and a one toughness creature. And then Sultai Soothsayer is a big butt naga. And it lets you take one of the top four cards of your library and ditch the rest to the graveyard. Aerostorm's still nice. Disdainful Strike is play or disdainful stroke is playable but not great dragon scale boon's good disowned ancestor is really only good in abzan sultai scavenger is fine tusk Colossodon is just like <laughs> pretty unplayable considering that most of the morphs become better than this but there's not a lot of incentive to draft these vanilla big creatures when you have morphs that just turn into better creatures for less mana than these master of pearls easy pick here though whether we go down the morph path which it fits in or we just stick to jeskai Master of Pearls is very good. Obviously really good if you can go wide, but we don't know if we're going to be able to do that yet. Alright, so some pretty poor cards here. Witness of the Ages is playable as a morph, but it doesn't morph into anything particularly exciting. Just got Wind Scout's nice. Prowess Creature, 2 on Flyer. Leaping Master I think is worse than Wind Scout, but it's fine. Mardu Hateblade's good if you have Raid worth triggering. And then there's also Mystic of the Hidden Way. 3-2 Unblockable. Morph it up for 3 mana, start getting in there. I think it's between one of the blue cards here. Jeskai Windscout is good in Jeskai, obviously. Hence the name, right? Uh, let me go ahead and rearrange these. I could see Cut and Monastery Flock. 
Master of Pearls, we're always casting for three. So our curve looks like this. Ice Feather Aven might not make the cut here. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to take Mystic of the Hidden Way over Jeskai Wind Scout. Yeah, let's do that. Lots of morphs. Icy Blast, Winter Flame, come on now. Team of Charger, Force Away. The pack is great. So Icy Blast um, just taps a bunch of creatures, tap X creatures. But if you have Ferocious, it keeps those creatures tapped down. It's almost like Barrage of Boulders, which just gets you in there. So I'm not entirely sure it's even better. The one big difference, of course, is that Icy Blast is instant. Right now, I don't have a lot of ways to take advantage of that. I'm tempted to just take Winter Flame. It usually kills a morph and taps another creature, which is great. I wouldn't mind, like, Abomination of Gadul. I think I'm a little bit far away from Abzan Guide, given what we're not playing here. But we still have this possibility. There's also Bloodfire Expert. I think I'm going to take Winter Flame over Icy Blast. That might be wrong, but I don't actually have a lot, a lot of ways to make Ferocious matter here. I have two currently. And one of them is going to be a 2-2 most of the time. Yeah, Winter Flame seems fine. Ooh, Dragon Eye Savants was a pet card of mine. I'm not entirely sure it's good. I could use a 2-drop, though. This one's the one that lets you look at your opponent's hand. Embodiment of Spring would be nice if I end up going down the more 4-5 or five color route. Torment and Voice, not necessary in this format. It's a little bit better in M19 than it is here. Lots of options. Looks like we might get something back out of this pack. It's pretty good. Smite the Monster is also decent. Destroys a big creature. I think I'm going to take Dragon Eye Savants. Replace Monastery Flock with that at the very least. It's definitely better than Monastery Flock. Um, I, I guess that's debatable. Monastery Flock has a uh, flying. Look at this pack. 03, 05, 05, 06. Uh, I could take Swiftwater Cliffs too. Yeah, let's just take Mana Fixin'. Mana Fixin's good. It's a high priority. How of the Horde, huh? I don't really have a lot of great spells that works with. It lets you copy the next spell you play. Um, there's an Opulent Palace. Help Splash Green or Black. Glacial Stalker is fine. Wetland Sandbar is pretty bad. Although two mana, two power creatures are never that bad. Dead Drop is nice. I'm gonna take Oppo. Over Glacial Stalker. Yeah. Ooh, Bear's Companion. I love Bear's Companion. Probably take that here. It's just a good card. Six power, six toughness worth of... Or <laughs> six power and six toughness worth of stats for five mana. Played this in the previous deck. Pretty good. Bloodfire Expert's nice, but I'm already pretty set on threes. Yeah, like a lot of my twos are threes. A lot of these are threes. <laughs> This is kind of what my curve looks like. Monastery Flock, take it or leave it. Bear's Companion it is. Another dead drop? Incremental growth is absurd. Um, This is probably a clear sign that people have not played a lot of cons if I'm getting this card. Or green is just so open that nobody's drafting it. But this card wins you games. I wonder if it's worth stretching that far for it. Looks like I might be like four color not playing black, but have the option to play black. Incremental Growth is great. I could take either of these two cards on the end here, but this card just wins games. It basically adds six power to the board, but on creatures that you already have in play, so it's kind of like they have haste. Snowhorn Rider is nice. The blue-green lane got a lot better with Incremental Growth, though. I think I'm leaning towards this four-color build and just leave black out altogether. Like, Death Frenzy could be a good sideboard option. Sadisi's pet, definitely not that great. Thornwood Falls seems good here, though. And we wield Trash. Trumpet Blast was actually pretty good in this format. Trumpet Blast was probably at its best in this format than any other format I've played Trumpet Blast in. Siegecraft is terrible. Tomb of the Spear Dragon's pretty bad. Could take Sage Eye Harrier. This card's not good, but if we end up down the Trail of Mystery path, I could see bringing it in or something. Same for Krumar Bonkin, although this card is just fine on its own. Mardu Blazebringer is not good. It's basically a removal spell for a creature. Ooh, Force Away coming back is kind of sweet, though. Do like me some cheap interaction. And Scaldkin is fine. Bloodfire Mentor I don't like. Yeah, Scaldkin's a playable. The double green on this is kind of hard to... Ooh, Howl the Horde? Just not a lot that Howl the Horde's even great with. Howl the Horde is just a dead card some amount of the time. 
This is my maybe pile. These three cards. Yeah, that's maybe as well. If we don't make playables for some reason. But we're picking up good fix in here. We've already got two lands that splash for green. We've got two in our primary colors. What's so champion's really nice if you want to be attacking. Straight up Jeskai Charm. Could be the pick here. Ponyback Brigade as well. But I'm not really playing black. Um, this one either domes your opponent for four, gives all of your creatures plus one plus one in lifelink until end of turn, or puts a creature on top. That's like the most versatility you could possibly ask for. And it's in our primary three colors. Blood Soak Champion's not worth playing in our deck, and Soul Tie Flayer I don't think is a card you really want to splash for, but it's fine. On the wheel, I wouldn't mind Ponyback Brigade or Jungle Hollow, but I'm probably going to just stick with the Jeskai Charm. <laughs> this card. Um, I don't know that this is worth splashing for. Just read this one real quick. not going to talk about it too much because I'm probably not going to take it, but it's kind of a cool little card. As for what we're actually going to take, Watcher of the Roost is a nice morph that we can flip up free of mana if we have some white cards in our hand. Abomination, I don't think, is the morph I'm looking for, considering the black mana. And then Riverwheel Aerialist, which is fine. Another Mystic, Hooten Mandrels, Alabaster Kieran's decent. Not amazing, but decent. I think I want one of these two. I am tempted to just pick up the Watcher of the Roost. Another evasive little morph creature. Don't really want to play Monastery Flock at this point, but I will if I feel like Trail of Mystery is getting in there. River Wheel. I'll take Watch of the Roost. Brave the Sands, not very good. Another uh, Ifrit, huh? I knock Bonkin's really good in this format. Especially with things like Feet of Resistance. Instant speed ways to put counters on things. Dragon Scale Boon, you just suddenly give your creatures first strike. Mardu Rough Rider is also strong if you want to be attacking constantly. Shatter is in the set for some reason. Um, Yeah, just the Ifrit Weapon Master is nice. Could see taking the Bonkin here, but Weapon Master is a good one. Teamer Charm, huh? Warname Aspirin is also a nice one if you can get an early game creature on board. There's also Bringlow. We could use Removal. Wouldn't mind Embodiment of Spring here either. Yeah, I'll take Bringlow. It's 4 mana to 3 damage to any creature, but it deals 5 of that creature at a plus 1 counter. Could see taking War Behemoth. There's, there's enough cards that I might wheel something out of this pack. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I would play any of those 6 cards, but removal's good. <laughs> Narset. Um, do I take Narset? Narset is actually not amazing. Unless you're like all spells, Narset's just not really that great. Like, it can't cast creatures, which is the problem, and it mills you for four, essentially, so you have to actually win with what you already have. We don't really have enough spells that Narset's really what I want. 3-2 First Striker's fine, but not on a six mana card. I think we want something else here, which is kind of sad, right? You get the on-color Mythic for your guild, and you're not even going to play it. That's really sad. Is it better than just, like, another Barrage of Boulders, Tusk Guard Captain that I'm probably not going to play? Fine, I'll take it. I'm probably not going to play it. Hordling Outburst. Yeah, red is open. Hordling Outburst is very nice. Dragon Scale Boon is fine, but kind of want to limit the green cards. I'm not even sure I should be trying to play Incremental Growth. Three drops for days. Treasure Cruise or Windscarred Crag, huh? Treasure Cruise would be nice since it'd be the only Delve card we have in the deck. But Windscarred Crag is just good mana fixing. How many? We're already at 22 playables with some options in our sideboard. Probably not playing Narset, though. All right, I'll take the first Treasure Cruise over a good Mana Fixer. Huh? Oh, we haven't seen that yet. I was like, what? Cancel's bad in this format. Double Blue is actually, like, a huge problem. You're often playing three or four colors. So I'm between just a draw two, which I want a lot less now that I have a potential one mana draw three. Or just another bad morph. Bad morph it is. Alright, Cripple and Chill is fine. And not wheeling too much, but it's kind of expected. Summit Prowler gives us another double red card. Kind of not in love with that. Might take Hoot and Mandrels. Although it's a little bit at odds with the Treasure Cruise. Old Summy P. I'll take Hoot and Mandrels. Goblin Slide. Not great for our deck. 
but don't want anything else here. All right, Bloodfire Expert or War Behemoth, huh? Bloodfire Expert's fine. I'll take War Behemoth. Bloodfire Expert dies really easily, though, which is kind of the problem. It's really good with um your Ferocious cards. Yeah, Leaping Master is nice. At the very least, Leaping Master's got to be better than, like, Wetline Sandbar. Tomb of the Spirit Dragon is pretty bad. I don't care if your whole deck is colorless creatures. It's just not really worth it. And it's really hard to find room for a colorless land in your decks. It's not like it's free to play that. Alright, so we have two actual green cards and then one that can be cast face down. But one of our green cards is double green, which makes me very, very weary. We have two green fixers, and also if we get Trail of Mystery, it's kind of open season on whatever lands we want. Cards that stick out to me as things I probably don't want right away. Let's look through. Maybe not the second Cripple and Chill. Um, Scaldkin's not great. War Behemoth is fine. <laughs> Our curve is just all three drops. Uh, I could see not playing Summit Prowler in this deck either. But I think we're at the point where we actually can't be cutting too much. Maybe I should have taken... Windscarred Crag over Treasure Cruise. I don't think our mana is going to work out for us. I probably shouldn't play Incremental Growth, but I'm gonna. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. All right, let's do that one more time. Three drop, three drop, three drop, three drop, three drop, three drop. There we go. And minus four lands gives us 25 cards, so I want to cut two cards, possibly three, and play 18 with all of these threes. Um, Barrage of Boulder is probably not going to be amazing in our deck. We don't have a lot of ways to actually trigger Ferocious, which is the best part of it. Dealing one to everything doesn't matter too much, unless you're against a deck that's good against. So we'll keep in mind that we have that as a sideboard option, but not in love with it here as a mainboard option. And... We have, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 morphs? Is that enough to make Trail of Mystery even worth it? Hmm. If you can get this on turn 2 with green mana every time, then it's fantastic, right? But we can't guarantee we're always going to have that. And if I don't play Trail of Mystery, I probably don't play Incremental Growth. Kind of want to try it, though. We are just Morph City here. After first picking a Death Frenzy. Oh, man. Why couldn't this be like a Mantis Rider? Why couldn't it be another 3-drop? Alright, let's cut one more card here. So I'm looking at Summer Prowler. Double Red is kind of a problem. Oh, we have Bear's Companion, too, which is green. Yeah, our mana's gonna suck. Just letting everybody know ahead of time. Granted, that is 7 cards in our deck that we can cast as colorless cards. Cripple and Chill buys us time, gets us closer to our cards. All right, Summy P can come out. Now we do the fun part, which is sorting by color, where it's going to stack everything into a million different piles. Um, really, these are the three cards that I'm going to consider gold here. Uh, let me put all my morphs over here real quick and see how stringent my mana requirements actually are. Skaldkin's not great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so it looks like th these are the seven morphs that I can play um, without color requirements. So white and green definitely are not necessary, or at least not hugely necessary. So let's see. Um, four mount or forests for three green cards? Jeez. Uh, I guess it's Count Nice Feather Haven too. Where would how does this thing math? I was thinking like one forest, maybe two. Just make it completely <laughs> un unable to cast my incremental growth. That would only give us three green sources with a double green card in our deck. Okay. Definitely feel like we need more blue. Probably less white. Probably don't need a lot of white at all. We have a double red card here as well. Okay, let me see. 
So I know I'm missing a land here. I'm only got 16, but let's just do a count real quick. So this will give me four green sources, which is eh, not good, but closer to what I want. At least incremental growth is always going to be stuck in our hand, but it's fine. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blue sources. That's actually pretty good. Don't feel like we need more islands here. One, two, three, four red sources. That's probably not good enough. Going to go up one more red source. And then planes, one, two, three. That's pretty bad too, considering a lot of our morphs are actually white. Master of Pearls needs double white to morph. Hmm. feel like I'm supposed to cut green here. Or Trail Mystery is probably not the card we want to splash at this point. Incremental growth, as good as it is. I don't think we can mess up our mana base that much. So let's go ahead and cut those, bring in some s mediocre cards. Like Summit Prower can come back in now that we're not playing as much green. Bear's Companion being our only green card that we really need a lot of green for seems fine. Blazebringer is not good. Summy P, come on. And then I'm going to be adding two lands. Do I even need the forest at that point? Or two green? Nah. Get rid of the forest. No way to fetch it up. Bloodfire Mentor, Barrage of Boulders looks a little bit better with these cards, but not that great. Hood and Mandrills is fine. Mm, we've got some pretty bad cards here, too, now that I think about it. Goblin Slide. God, incremental growth just adds so much power to our deck. All right, let's bring in Barrage of Boulders. And then three lands. So, Golden Mountain... Probably like Mountain Plains Plains. Now nah, our blue seemed actually pretty good. So let's do a final count here. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine blue. Four, five, five red, that's it. And then two, four, five white. I'm gonna have to cut a blue for something else. I'm gonna add another red here, especially two double red cards in the deck. Wow, my, my mana always feels like it sucks in this format, and it does. Don't get me wrong, at least the green is like on other lands, so it's not hurting us too much. But that's the power morph, so let's go ahead and run what we got here. Does not seem as consistent or good as our previous deck, but we'll make it work. Alright, my name's Timothy with Mana Rocks, thanks for watching, see you in the matches. Alright y'all, we are here on the play... Uh, this hand is one blue short of being keepable, I think. Can't cast anything right now. Treasure Cruise, pretty close to a mulligan already. Yeah, I think I have to mold this. This is better, I think. We can cast and flip Ice Feather Aven. Yeah, this seems fine. Summit Prowler, don't really want that. Start off with an Opulent Palace, and at least we get to start with majority of our colors. Could also cast Ice Feather Aven on two and just start attacking for two. But I like Ice Feather Aven face down instead. Uh, draw more red. I guess I have double red cards in my deck, so that's not the worst thing in the world. Alright, we'll pass it back. I don't have a lot of removal in my deck, which is kind of a problem. I have, um, this is, you know, removal. Leaping Master. You can pay three mana to give it flying. Two power creature. Alright, that's nice. Now we can cast everything. Starting with our morph. I'll have to make sure I play the island next turn. Considering I uh kind of botched that a little bit. Um yeah, as far as removal goes, I have Winter Flame, which is good. And it's probably good against people playing things like Leaping Master. And then I have uh Bring Low. I think that's it. This is temporary removal. No more from the opponent. Holding up that cancel mana. Probably going to play Salt Road Patrol here. This thing blocks very well. I'll go ahead and attack first, though. Opponent wants to go ahead and do stuff. I have this morph available. It can bounce itself, right? No, it can't. So you can't do crazy, crazy morph shenanigans. Just keep bouncing it back. Trigger your trail mysteries a thousand times. 
I don't know if my opponent's going to be the type of person playing Cancel here, or Disdainful Stroke, but Salt Road Patrol seems pretty good. It dodges a lot of the burn in this set. Not all of it, but a good number of it. It blocks his Leaping Master for sure. And uh, you Outlast this, start getting in there. Probably won't even waste my mana Outlast in. Actually, I could. Next turn, Outlast, put Master of Pearls face down. Yeah, this seems fine. I was going to say, I'm blocking if you attack. Alright, put him with four mana. I'm just going to attack with Salt Road Patrol. I don't really want to... Actually, I could flip the morph. Bounce that and attack. Uh, I think I want to get Master of Pearls down, though. So I'm just going to attack with Salt Road Patrol. And then play Master of Pearls face down. Um, this costs three. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We fate in response, so opponent just drawing two. Okay, that's cool. I feel like they're they're probably missing white mana here, on account of them having a leaping master on board and no white mana. Ah, they found it. They found the plane. What do we do? What do we do? Oh, please attack. No attack. All right. We have Master of Pearls that we can do this turn. Ooh, Cripple and Chill. Kind of like that. I'm going to just Cripple and Chill and attack with everything. Uh, oh. Guess that does not leave up the activation here, does it? Mm hmm. I kind of want to play War Behemoth too. All right. Let's be a little reactive here. A little bit too reactive, probably. I'm going to attack with just Salt Road Patrol and then play War Behemoth and keep up. Ice Feather Avens activation. Master of Pearls gets way, way better as the game goes on. They're going to kill shot my Salt Road Patrol. All right, can't stop you. I could bounce it back to my hand, I suppose, but it's fine. Forgot kill shot was a thing here. Sure. We'll just play another morph. And we want to keep up blue-green, so tap like that. Waiting for my opponent to like spend six mana, play a creature, and then bounce and start getting in there. Need my opponent to tap out for something good. Ice Feather Aven is green and blue. Ooh, they played a morph of their own. What else you got for me there? Uh, Cripple and Chill their morph on end step. Is that right? Yeah. Can't get us steered in combat or anything like that. Portaling Outburst and Barrage of Boulders. Alright. Um... Portaling Outburst plus Master of Pearls is kind of insane. So I could see... Yeah, why don't we do that? Why don't we go ahead and bounce Leaping Master, attack with everything, and then play Hordling Outburst. Get this thing out of here. Yes, I would like to use that ability. <laughs> Alright, now we'll attack with everything. They could have another kill shot here. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it, though. Oh, no, maybe they do. You can kill shot one of the morphs. Hope they just don't randomly hit Master of Pearls. Oh, Jeskai's Charm. Oh, and they get to see it. So they know it's Master of Pearls. Why couldn't you choose the other one? Why? Um, still taking four, so we're pretty far ahead, but they've got more resources than we do. Boom. Yeah, they know about the Master of Pearls, which is kind of problematic. This thing's a little awkward, too. None of these things make Barrage of Boulders, um... Unblockable. I guess that thing just straight up dies to Barrage of Boulders. So that might be one reason to play it. And Whirlwind Adept. Alright, so good reason to attack with all the goblins. Might be able to clear off a bunch of my opponent's creatures here. War Behemoth just eats anything that blocks. They know about Master of Pearls. So I'm just going to jam with everything. 
if they block one of the one ones with whirlwind add up then i get to kill both their creatures with barrage boulders and still play master pearls face down if they go to like block war behemoth then i can eat any number of creatures that blocks it all right uh that's pretty smart one, two, three, four. Do I just want to eat Leaping Master or do I want my morph to die and then kill both their creatures? Nah, I think this is fine. Well, this costs five mana. Master of Pearls is so good here. So I think I let that I let that happen. My opponent goes down to eight. And I play Master of Pearls face down and Barrage of Boulders to kill Whirlwind Adept. Um, it's a little bit, let's see, the only difference, I guess War Behemoth's good enough. I don't want to just throw away a random goblin. Let's go ahead and just flip War Behemoth. Opponent's still taking four. I get to keep this 3-6 on board, which looks pretty good against them. And they go down to eight. I have a flyer on board, so that's relevant. They get to untap with their morph now, though, which is also relevant. And they have four cards in hand. And they know about our Master of Pearls. Might be able to get to a point where I can play Master of Pearls and Transform it in the same turn. Alright, so they're leaving up Morph Mana. They are leaving up the Morph Mana. Uh, this could be a lot of different things. I think it could be so many different things that it's not even worth attacking. It's a Flyer, then it eats Ice Feather Aven. Um, Thousand Winds is like the only thing I can really think of that flies. There's a 1-5. I think I'm just gonna jam with Ice Feather Aven, and if they have a flying morph, then they got it. Alright, they didn't morph before block, so I don't think that's a flyer. But I'm gonna go and play Tranquil Cove, Master of Pearls. One, two, three, four, five. They know about this, so they're probably gonna want to kill it. If they can. What if I don't kill it and I draw a land? Ooh, what you got? Oh, water world. So just bouncing two creatures back, that's fine. It's actually a little awkward for them. I mean it's good. Definitely definitely worked for them. But uh now I get to play both my morphs and they have to play the guessing game on which one's which. I'm just probably not gonna block at all. They want to morph this, and I take like 10 this turn, then that's fine. I'm pretty far ahead in the race. Looks like we're getting morphed on. Oh, I guess it could be Jeskai Ifrit, then I take a bunch. Even then, I'd only take 11. Yeah, or this thing, yeah, Ifrit Weapon Master. Oh, and they have a spell. And they're going to Jeskai Charm again. Oh no, Lifelink! <sighs> that's pretty bad. So now I take 11, or I take 13, but they gain that. Alright, now we got a real game on our hands. Alright, they're down to one card though. We're far from dead. This thing has first strike though, it's kind of annoying. Hmm. Yeah, we're in pretty bad shape now. I guess I can just block that, play War Behemoth. One, two, three. Yeah, this did not go as planned, did it? They have two Jeskai Charms? That's really good. That's going to be hard to beat. Uh, yeah, I'll play War Behemoth here. Just straight up cast it. I think we're in trouble, though. Prona has any more big spells like this, then we're in a lot of trouble. We could draw our own Jeskai Charm, would be pretty strong. Ooh. Well, I guess they get to know the order of the morphs now, but... <laughs> We're going to go ahead and attack with Ice Feather, play Watcher and transform it, or morph it, and then play Master of Pearls. So they'll know Master of Pearls is our last face down card, but they're fine. Alright, so let's go and cast this. One, two, three... Shaboom, we have to morph that now because we're about to play our only other white card. And they already know about Master Pearl, so it's fine. Gain of two life, not irrelevant here either. Alright, then we'll go ahead and cast this. And we'll see what happens. 
I do have enough mana to um, morph this, give everything plus two, and then make all my creatures unblockable, so we'll see. Ooh, what is this? Siegecraft. Well, that card's bad. Plus two, plus four, that's it. Go block, block. Attack with both? No attack at all. And they still have two cards in hand? That's what worries me. Winter Flame. So I can just straight up tap this. I could just keep attacking with the flyers for now. Uh, what happens if I go Barrage of Boulders? They can't block. I guess I have to morph first. They have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. It's more than enough to kill them, but I'm worried about what they could have. I think they would need to deal with two things here. They can't have another Water Whirl. Um, problem is, if I attack with them, if I go for that plane and they have something, then I die on the swing back. Another Jeskai Charm seems very unlikely, but possible. Arc Lightning, not an instant. I don't think there's too much they could have here. I'm not sure how much I'm supposed to play around it. I think I'm going to go for it. Let's go ahead and do it. I guess they could have a counter spell for Barrage of Boulders, but then I still get a pretty good attack with my Flyers. Uh, yeah, let's go Morph. Give everything the buff. Alright, opponent didn't respond. Let's go ahead and barrage of boulders now. Nine, thirteen, seventeen, plus six is twenty-three. If they deal with my biggest thing, it's still seventeen. Should I leave a blocker back here? Let's see if I do that. Then I'm attacking for um 13, 17, 20, and then if they deal with this, I don't die on the swing back. I think I'm just going to go for it. If they have something, they have it. We'll see. We'll see what it is. If not, we kill them. All right. Kind of cool with just killing them. Tough decision there. Opponent playing a lot of instants. When we play around, I mean, it's hard to play around double Jeskai Charm. This being able to put a creature back on top when you're behind just ugh, kills you. Double Jeskai Charm. Death Frenzy seems okay against them, but it also just wipes our board, which I'm kind of not into. I know Tracker seems fine. Not good, but fine. I don't know if it's better than, like, Scaldkin, which seems pretty poor against them. Scaldkin's just fine, though. Yeah, our cards are all just fine. <laughs> That's the definition of our draft here. Bloodfire Mentor. I keep thinking this is Bloodfire Expert, and I'm like, why am I not playing it? But then I remember it's an O5 that loots for an exorbitant amount of mana, so that might be why. Sage Eye Harrier. Blocks the 4-3. They're playing Siegecraft. That card's so bad. Especially in this format. Incremental Growth. I think maybe I want this Inoc Tracker, but probably not. This card's not great. War Behemoth did a pretty good job of blocking there. All right, let's just keep our deck exactly as it is. We'll get a little more information before we uh, start jamming sideboard cards. Uh, looks like we're mulling whatever this is. Yeah, this is fairly unkeepable. <laughs> you don't have to do that to me, though. You don't have to do that to me, game. You can give me keepable hands. No, thank you. Opulent Palace Swiftwater Cliffs. Leaping Master. Sure, I'll keep this. Keeping lands on top for sure. Watcher of the Roost going to have to be our first morph here, unless we draw more white cards. Yeah. Mulligan and against an opponent who has double Jeskai Charm does not feel good. If they just get ahead and then they put creatures back on top of our libraries, it's hard for us to stabilize against that. Jeskai Charm is so good. Uh, more important to have our blue-green mana, or more important to have our red-blue? Probably red-blue, right? Oh, we want to play Leaping Master on turn two, possibly? Yeah, we'll go and play Swiftwater Cliffs. Black doesn't matter for our deck, and green only matters for a couple cards that we're not really casting on turn two anyway, so... 
think red's more important in case we feel like we have to get Leap and Master down. Crippling Chill. Don't mind drawing that. All right, opponent didn't play anything, so I'm fine getting another tap land down here, and then I'll just start playing Morphs, I suppose. Uh, I don't have any white mana, but that's fine. Hey, opponent played a Morph. Look at that. Cycle Cripple and Chill at some point. Uh, sure. Opponent didn't seem like they had a good defense against Flyers. Guess we gotta watch out for Kill Shot, but... Not gonna play around Kill Shot unless they keep the mana up. Uh, pro tip, don't play around Kill Shot if your opponent doesn't have mana for Kill Shot up. Trade in Creature seems pretty good when I have Treasure Cruise too. So, like, trade in Leap and Master, cast in Cripple and Shell. Oh, wow, they're just going to go, like, straight up force away? That seems hyper-aggressive. I take two. Oh, they might be missing a land drop. Why would you force away right now? Are they scared of me having some two drop? Alright, I could go Leap and Master plus Sing and Bell Strike, but I don't like using Sing and Bell Strike on... A creature that's probably not morphing anytime soon. So I will just replay this thing, I guess. This gives another creature plus three plus oh. Uh, yeah. Just gonna replay Watcher of the Roost. And there's no reason to morph this until my turn, unless it's relevant for some reason, which I doubt it will be. So I don't really need to do it on end step or anything weird like that. Sky Banner? Wow, my opponent deck it's so good, but it has some really bad cards. Uh, I'll trade if they attack. Yeah, I will definitely trade. Let's go ahead and just morph this up now. Showing them the we Weapon Master. And then I'll go ahead and block. Again, I have Treasure Crew, so filling up my graveyard here seems fine. I have another play in Weapon Master. If I draw, yeah, I was going to say if I draw land, I can play both of these. I'm going to know what this is, of course, but whatever. Leaping Master's ability is not irrelevant. It costs a lot, but that's fine. I remember it coming up quite a bit. Also, how can you not like this card? The flavor. You pay three mana and suddenly it's flying, just like real monks. Four mana, straight up cast in Wee Fate to try and hit land drops, and it worked. Going to get ahead of our opponent here, though. Probably going to morph this this turn. Oh, I don't have white mana. Man, planes off the top? Barrage of boulders. All right, so it looks like we're sitting on crippling chill here. Yeah, if I can morph this turn, then I'd be dealing 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 damage to the opponent. All right. Passing. Going to cycle crippling chill uh, on any creature they play. Except, I guess, if they play the 4-2 Hexproof, I can't do that. Oh, wow, Seeker of the Way is strong. My opponent's deck is good, but they're playing some questionable cards here. I don't know what that Force Away was about. Seems like you want to do that later in the game. All right, let's go and Cripple and Chill. My opponent's leaving mana up for something there. I don't think this gives First Strike to the other creature, does it? No, just plus 3 plus 0. Okay, Tranquil Cove is our white mana. Summit Prowler, I can cast this turn. That's cool. Kind of like the idea of putting Bell Strike on Seeker. I don't want my opponent gaining life here when I'm racing them. But I can only play one thing this turn, so it's probably going to be Summit Prowler. Opponent's keeping up Jeskai Charm mana. They're going to put my Morph back on top. Oh, all right, Kill Shot. All right, well, that's probably better for me than whatchamacallit, given the Treasure Cruise. Could also just cast Treasure Cruise now. The longer this game goes, the cheaper it'll be. Three cards in my graveyard. Opponent's at 14. Alright. Summy P coming down. <laughs> this card's funny. Uh, It was in Dragons of Tarkir too. If you've never played the set. And they used the same art, but they photoshopped little dragons in the background. I, I, I think it's funny. You don't have to think it's funny. Alright, four mana. Bring low. Kill my Summit Prowler. Alright. It's a little mean, but it's fine. Four cards in the graveyard. Cruise currently costs four. Oh, it has lots of removal. 
just lots of removal. All right, so one, two, three, four. I can cast Treasure Cruise and Sing and Bell Strike. I think I start losing if my opponent starts casting spells and gaining life with that. But I could easily draw Treasure Cruise into a removal spell for this right now. And if not, just put Sing and Bell Strike on it. Yeah, I think I like Cruise here. I don't think I have any real use for my graveyard. Uh, blue, blue, red, red. Winter Flame would be pretty nice. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and Cruise. I think I already played my land this turn, which is kind of awkward, but that's fine. Oh, Jeskai Charm? Can I even cast that? Blue, white, red. Yes, I can. Or I could play a Morph. Uh, I'm going to sit behind Jeskai Charm here. The reason being is my opponent's pretty incentivized to go ahead and play spells during their turn to try and trigger Prowess. Alright, they're going to Jeskai Charm to put that on top. And then I'm going to give them one more opportunity to go ahead and cast a spell, and then I'm going to Jeskai Charm their Seeker back. Although this is pretty valuable for 4 damage. Maybe I just force away, but then they get to replay it. Uh, I just want to make it so my opponent's drawing a jet Seeker, or do I just want to force away? Yeah, let's just get this thing out of here. Alright, so... Blue, white, red. Then I'll spend my turn going War Behemoth plus Leaping Master, and I get to keep up Force Away. I could just straight up cast War Behemoth. Uh, okay, they're going to force away their creature back so that they don't draw it next turn, but then they're down a force away. Jeez, my opponent just has all sorts of bounce. All right. Not a bad play from the opponent. We're going to go one, two. Yeah. Boom, boom, and then I, I was debating whether or not to just play War Behemoth here, but uh, I like keeping Forts away up. Opponent's probably going to double spell next turn. They still have not hit their sixth land, or even their fifth land, I guess. Another Jeskai banner? All right, sure. All right, I'm going to sing and bell strike this instead of force away. Force away is better against my opponent's instant speed interactions. Sing and bell strike lets me get in for... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, I guess I get in for a lot. If they use all their mana to untap with sing and bell strike, then they're probably not going to have a spell here. So let's just go ahead and morph. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then bell strike. And we'll go ahead and jam. Barrage Boulder's not looking too great here. But if they just draw into like some one toughness blockers, it gets by them. You got something with your second Jeskai banner? Hey, if you play cons, I would not recommend drafting the banners. I guess if you have prowess creatures, it does something. Opponent's going down to seven here, which is why keeping that Jeskar charm available was nice. It deals four damage, that's a pretty big chunk. Oh, uh, <laughs> let's, let's not concede the game. I need to stop right-clicking before something goes bad there. Also, this is the part of the game where Leaping Master starts to look pretty good. Being able to just punch in there for two is relevant when your opponent's at a low life total. Not keeping up Force Away this turn. Opponent is choked on mana. Assuming their hand is all spells. I guess we knew about this somehow. Alright, they're passing without doing anything. And I'm drawing, hopefully no more lands from this point. Ooh, that card's good. I'm going to go ahead and put this face down. going to attack with both. I could go for the win here, but my opponent's clearly on something. Um, they didn't do anything. I'm going to wait a turn. Mm, 
What is this? A Wii Fate? Really? That's all they've got? Alright, well in that case I'm going to let him resolve Wii Fate and then now I'm going to go for the kill. Let's just make sure they don't have like a random way to untap this that I forgot about. Let's let him resolve this and then I'm going to turn this face up. Uh, I guess actually it's probably better to do this on War Behemoth. I guess if they have another bounce spell, I'd rather them make them bounce leap and master. But uh, if they have a like cheap burn spell, then I'd rather use the ability on War Behemoth. This does win the game if uh, yeah, nice. All right, his opponent's deck is very uh redundant. Double Jeskai Charm, double Force Away, double Weave Fate. Seeker of the Way, but then they've got like double banner. I wonder if every time they drafted a card, it just accidentally gave them a duplicate. Anyway, uh, Jeskai won against Jeskai. See you in round two. All right, um, we are back for round two. I'm going to see how many kill shots we can run into this time. This hand sketch, um, it can cast one spell and on fourth mana of any color, it can cast Bring Low to take care of basically anything i think i'm going to keep it bear's companion looks really bad but if we draw blue cripple and chill gets us closer to drawing that green and at the very least i have a three mana two two so i think it's fine against non hyper aggressive decks watcher of the roots good draw there and at least it's a fine draw i'd rather just draw like island forest i guess i don't have forest in my hand deck but you get the point chess guy student one three with prowess Seen this card a million times. This card was in uh, Shadows Over Innistrad as a vampire, a red vampire. Sanguine something. And then it was also um, Defiant Kenra, or it was one of those Kenra creatures in Amonkhet. Dragon Grip. Our opponent's going for the full-on kill. It's pretty good. Four power first striker. Fortunately, I don't have too much to combat that right now, but... We have ways to deal with it, I suppose. Yeah, I was going to say if I draw Force Away, but I don't actually have Force Away, and Bring Low unfortunately doesn't kill this. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. I'm just going to go ahead and... I don't even need to reveal this right now. I'm going to attack and just uh, Bring Low my opponent's creature. They dealt four damage. That was nice, but let's go and get it out of here while we can. I remember Jeskai Student never being particularly great. Interesting that we're playing against another Jeskai deck. Oh, you. Alright, so here's where things start to look pretty bad. Alright, we're going to go ahead and morph this up. This is less like our mana requirements, like getting us in more that we're just not drawing lands as it is. Going to go ahead and just play this. Opponent knows what it is. Or maybe I am playing a different morph. Who knows? And then I'll just attack. Maybe I should have given them the option to go ahead and block this since I'm fine trading Watcher for basically anything at this point. But I don't feel like we're in a particularly good position unless we draw blue within the next turn or two. Basically the next turn. Oh, combo and Jeskai Charm. So yeah, I'm not feeling good about this at all. No, I'm not in a position to be attacking. Jeskai Charm can definitely get us back in there, but we are in bad shape. Opponents yeah, morph mana already. We're pretty far behind. Don't have good blocks on their creatures and no interaction. High Spire Mantis also really good. 3-3, three, three, Flying Trample. I'll trade my 2-1 for their 3-2. Alright. Yeah, I mean, it's not great, but it'll work. I Spire Mantis going to get in there. Opponent down to two cards in hand, so maybe maybe we can stabilize here. I'm a little scared of this morph, to be honest. Oh, timely Horde Mate coming in too. And this little Junker, that means they have something in hand. But why not the morph? What could that morph be that they're not attacking? <laughs> it could be whatchamacallit. Well, I don't have any interaction. This thing gets a lot worse. If I don't have another creature on board, but I don't know that it should just be taking seven here. So I think I'll trade for the three. This thing in Beltrike doesn't even look good here. They just have the mana to play it. Maybe they have like another Timely Horde Mate. 
I don't know. Let's see. Winter Flame. Winter Flame is good. Although, if they morph on end step, it's less good. Alright, let's just go ahead and pass here and see what we need to do. I don't want to aim win uh, Winter Flame at this morph, because they're probably able to morph it in response, and it's probably going to survive two damage. Let's see what they play first. Oh, Mistfire Weaver. Okay, so that's not bad. That gives it Hexproof. This gives me an opportunity to just go ahead and cast this. So let's deal... Wait, what mode first? I want to do both. Oh, tap target creature. So we want to tap High Spire Mantis, and we want to deal two to Mistfire Weaver. That seems pretty nice for us. They attack. Do I block? And they use a spell just to kill my morph? Nah, I don't think it's worth it, really. We'll see. Still pretty far behind. Could really use another island. Abzan Battle Priest? Man, that would have been a great Winter Flame target, too. Cruise, huh? Not really in a position where I should be cruising. I think I've still got to just play defense here. Kind of sucks. I guess this is a 4-3 first striker. Might just crippling kill here. Opponent's probably going to outlast that. Um, I'll take three and see what we have to react to, or I could just just guy charm that back to the top of my opponent's library now. Um, could force away. That seems pretty bad. All right, let's put it on top. Just deals with it for a turn. Don't have to worry about it next turn. Not getting attacked by anything else here. I imagine this is going to outlast. They're going to play something else. Jeez, they just have... Oh, seven mana? What is this? Venerable Lamasu. All right, it's a card that exists. So if that's the case, I'm probably going to play Singing Bell Strike on this. I guess they can basically tap out to... Um. Untap. Uh, just not in a good position having what I have. I'm going to play a morph. And then sing and bell strike the Lamasu. Fortunately, I don't have green mana for the Ice Feather Aven. Yeah, so if they play High Spire Mantis, then I'm not getting attacked by this Lamasu at least. And if they just tap majority of their mana to untap this, then yeah, I'm taking five, but at least they can't really cast anything else. Looks like that's the route they're going to go for, is untapping this thing. Maybe not. Um, no, I think my creatures are pretty valuable at this point. Green mana would be nice now, so I can keep up Ice Feather even. But even more blue is nice. Being able to cast more than one of these spells would be fantastic. They're going to play High Spire Mantis? No, they're passing? What? Oh, they're going to untap the Lamatu. Okay. So we're probably going to cripple and chill that back down, I imagine. Am I in a position to attack them at all? And they've got this 4-3 lifelinker. Yeah, I think we're in bad shape. We'll see here, though. I could go for a block, block. And just hope they have nothing in hand that interacts. But the fact that they keep attacking with this into two twos makes me feel like they have interaction. I'm going to go for it, though. And this thing's coming in. All right. So, oh, never mind. I can't do that. <laughs> That's stupid. All right. This is going to block here. This is going to block here. And I'll see what spell they have. Pretty close to losing the game on the spot now. We'll go ahead and morph, give this thing plus 3 plus 0. Alright, what do you have in response? They're going to kill my morph in response. They have a bring low of their own. Let's 
Swift Kick. Plus one, plus oh until end of turn. It fights target creature you don't control. So they're going to gain... Yeah, this is game. I don't want to show them that morph if I don't have to. We're super dead. <laughs> All right, five lands in 12 turns or whatever. Um, opponent has some flyers. Monastery Flock. I guess that thing's a 5-4. High Spire Mantis is okay. This is probably even better than Monastery Flock, though. It blocks and has the potential to attack. Doesn't morph for one blue, but get the point. Incremental Growth, I really wish, was just in our deck. Card's good. But we didn't even draw green that game. Probably a good sign that we probably shouldn't even be playing green. We'll see about this thing. Scaldkin is okay against them. It kills like Abzan Battle Priest. There's Companions probably less good against them. Playing against another like tricky Jeskai deck. Yeah, Sage Eye Harriers, whatever though. Summit Prowler is probably pretty bad against them. Uh, I'm just going to leave the deck as is. Not going to overthink things too much. Would like to draw mana this time though. The blue was just a little bit too... <laughs> Alright, maybe I shouldn't say anything out loud. I think we bulgined every game. Eh, this hand's fine, but it's not particularly good against my opponent. Um, This card's good too, but I really need blue mana, so I'm going to bottom that e -freight. Just pass. Can't even flip this watcher. Maybe that's a reason to keep that card on top. Master of Pearls, huh? That one's actually really good if we get there. Island off the top, please. I think my opponent's got better creature quality than us, but things like Venerable Lamasu I'm fine playing against. Oh, I would really not like to show my opponent Master of Pearls with this thing if I can avoid it. But if it can't be avoided, then fine. Almost any land drop here is nice. Blue would be the best, obviously. Jets guy student. Okay, Hordling Outburst is fine here. Uh, I do get to attack with this. I think them knowing about Master of Pearls is not worth me giving up on Watcher of the Roost attack here. And uh, I'll just play Hordling Outburst. I'm not blocking if my opponent attacks, of course. Play High Spire Man because I just can't attack anything. Abzan Battle Priest. Now would be a fantastic draw I'm to draw that. Nope. Uh, don't really like where this is going. Could have got in there for four. Swift Kick is pretty good against us too. Even though Swift Kick's not really that great of a card, it's really good with Abzan Battle Priest. The Lifelink. Go ahead and cast this Mysterious Morph. Looks like we might be going out uh, match two with the. Uh, no blue mana. Despite having nine blue sources, I don't think that's too bad. So the immediate thing, plus they could swift kick. No, cast a morph. Man, Winter Flame would be absurd. Winter Flame doesn't kill this now. Oh. <laughs> um, opponent knows about that. We could play Summit Prowler or Salt Road Patrol. Uh, da 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 da. Anything? Nope, that's all we got going for us here. Salt Root Patrol blocks this, but doesn't kill it. Summit Prowler trades, assuming they don't have anything. Uh, I think I'm just going to play some EP here. Winter Flame could even just buy as a turn of my opponent gaining four life. But one reason to play Summit Prowler is if I draw Barrage of Boulders, it's pretty good. Oh, I knock Bonkin, and now this thing has First Strike. Uh, that's pretty problematic for us. Man, not drawing blue in either of these games has hurt us so bad. Winter Flame would have been insane. Ooh, Feet of Resistance is very good, though. Very good. Just attack for two here. Opponent's racing us too hard with this uh, Abzan Battle Priest, though. I think I'll leave up Feet of Resistance. Hopefully they go for the Swift Kick now. I can Feet of Resistance in response. They kill their own creature or something like that. Yeah, they thought about something there. If they put a counter on this, it gains lifelink from Abzan Battle Priest. It's going to take my medicine. There's no reason to use this feat of resistance into some sort of combat trick and get two for one. Maybe we have a chance here if uh, we draw blue. Here comes that Lama Lamasu, creature type Lamasu. 
Alright, there go our attacks in the air. Alright. If I attack with everything, my opponent blocks four creatures. One, two, three, four. They take nine. And, uh, opponent knows about it too. Oh, this is tough. Play Salt Road Patrol and start blocking this thing? More creatures on board can't be bad. Still no blue mana, though. Feet of Resistance is nice here, and Master of Pearls might give us an avenue to win, but... I'm going to go ahead and block Abzan Battle Priest. They, again, want to use a trick, then that's fine. Ooh, if they don't attack with this, that's good news, that they probably don't have a trick. I'm going to go ahead and outlast their Bonkin now. Oh, just put another counter on that? That makes sense. Blue mana, please. Empty your hand so I know you don't have stupid anything. But empty your hand with bad cards. Oh, they just outlasted twice. All right, now they have two blockers. They, if I attack with everything, they block here, here. Boom, boom. Then they take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, plus 12 is 21. If they had nothing, that would be lethal, and they would lose their two creatures otherwise. They actually get to kill me on the swing back, though, which means I can't really do that. So I think it's time to attack with just things that can get in there. And then... Maybe I'd go for Master of Pearls on defense and try to eat some creatures here. Yeah, you know what? Master of Pearls can block this Lamatu, so it's probably going to be my bet. I don't know. If they have Swift Kick, they still have four cards in hand. I don't feel good about this, but we got to play to our out, which I think involves just blocking a lot of things here. The fact that this has First Strike is so bad for us, though. So I think what I do is go block... Block. They first strike off one of them. I get to feed of resistance the other one. They go for a trick. Then I can feed of resistance something. But then there's Lomasu. The alternative here is to block here and try to master of pearls our way out of this game. Like throw a couple extra blockers in there. Oh, they could have feed of resistance of their own. I didn't think about that. All right. I'm going to go for it and try to clear off their biggest creatures. They know about the Master of Pearls, which makes me think this just isn't happening. Let's see what their trick is. Yeah, they're going to make me do it. That's all I got. Over here, these would trade, though. Just seven open mana. We gonna die this game, guys. We gonna die. Yep, here comes a potential swift kick. Okay. Yeah, I guess opponent has to think about it here. Oh, they have some sort of X spell? Yeah, they have the swift kick. Alright, I see. So... They're going to gain a million life, and my flyer's gone. I killed their big lifelink thing, but they're at 32 now. I can't race that. That is late. That is so late. <laughs> I don't even have a good attack through their 1-3. That's embarrassing. What could their morph be? They did have a, um Efreet Weapon Master last game. So I think I'm Winter Flame in this turn. Uh, I need to keep up 5 mana. I'm going to go and Outlast. I don't know what I need to win this game. But it needs to deal with a Venerable Wamasu. Yeah, Swift Kick. Eh, pretty good with Life Linkers, turns out. And if I'd hit Blue, could have killed that Abzan Battle Priest. We'd be rocking and rolling. They gained so much life off of it. With Swift Kick. Swift Kick. Maybe I should have not flipped this and just let them go ahead and swift kick, use feet of resistance in response. 
I wouldn't have been able to flip Master of Pearls as well, but who knows. Jiren Instigator, so that's just a act of treason. Okay. Sure. Um, I think I go for Winter Flame now. So tap your old Masu, deal two to this thing. Is that right? That seems right. They take Leaping Master. Oh, you know what could get us back in this game? Jeskai Charm. Given all of my creatures pluck one, plus one, and lifelink. That could be enough. I will trade here. And sure, I'll go ahead and block their thing. They clearly have something, otherwise why go for that that turn? I'll go and let them use their trick. Trumpet Blast. Alright, yeah. Trumpet Blast is nice and all. Bear's Companion. <laughs> Green mana, Embarrassing. Embarrassing. Um, get in as much damage as I can this turn, I suppose. Five, six. Oh, they have just... I need to keep this back, don't I? All right. Best I can do right now. Gonna have to use... Uh, <laughs> gonna have to give this fly in and block a Lamasu. And then use Feet of Resistance to possibly keep it around for a turn. Pre-combat spell, huh? Yeah, this game did not go in our favor. Still only have one blue source. Yep. Go ahead and give this fly in. Give them an opportunity to kill it pre-combat. I'm not even going to bother blocking Jeskai Student here. And sure, I'll go for Feet of Resistance. Does not seem great. Pro-White. I get the... Keep my Leaping Master around another day. Opponent still just feels like they have infinite gas here. They haven't even played that many spells this game. Oh no. What do you get back? Swift Kick? Sure, Swift Kick's not even good. I'm getting owned by it. And they have another spell in hand. We're so dead. Suspension Field? Jeez, this opponent's deck is good. Yep. Alright, now I think we're <laughs> we're pretty, pretty much set to... Uh, Scoop it up. Scaldkin, huh? Guess that technically gives me another turn. One, two, three, four. Cost three to activate. Yeah, maybe there's something there. This thing doesn't fly, right? No. Sure. Alright, still playing to our outs. They have Swift Kick, though, so actually we can't really beat that, can we? Arrow Storm to the face. Dang, opponent just had gas the whole game. And we got mana screwed. So we're going to have to try and go for the 2-1 this time and make our play points back. But uh, I'll see you for round three. And here we are for round three against Draftaholics. Good name. Um, five lands, all of our colors. Watcher, <laughs> reveal and feed of resistance kind of gives up a lot of the value. But eh, we don't necessarily even have to do that. Uh, Sure. I think this is uh, the third play in a row for us, so that's nice. Uh, let's lead off with blue-red. I guess maybe an Opulent Palace is better there in case I want to play Witchmacala. I don't really want to draw any more land, though. Especially after getting completely uh, color-screwed in that last match. I don't think I want to be mana-flooded in round three. That's not exciting. Are we against Jeskai three times in a row? Cripple and Chill is nice. It's not. It's nice. Just cast this face down. Pass it back. All right. What you got? They could be Teamer. They could be Jeskai. They could be Red Blue. They could be five color morphs. Who knows? It could be literally any of the things. Uh, I'm just going to attack, and they want to trade. Then I get to actually morph this and play Feet of Resistance. Just eat their guy. Then I have a three-power flyer. Could also cripple and chill since I'm just drawing lands here and get in there. But I like the 
idea of attacking first. If they want to block morph on morph, then I'm kind of cool with it. All right, so now I reveal this, reveal and feat of resistance, gain my two life, and then cast feet. Oh, no, this doesn't have a color. Ah! Why did I do that? Eh, it's fine. I can't give it protection from a colorless creature. <sighs> bah, 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 bah. All right, let's not talk about it. Now they know about the feet of resistance, too. That was very sloppy. I am so sorry. I apologize sincerely. Go hang my head in shame. Glacial Stalker. Card's good. 4-5. Decent little body. I will cripple and chill here. Oh my god. Alright, Efreet Weapon Master's pretty good. And I get to protect that one with Feet of Resistance, so... I mean, unless <laughs> we're up against colorless creatures. Let's go and get an actual blue source down. Just step that, I guess. <laughs> Speaking of sloppy play, did not keep up a white mana for Feet of Resistance. Oh my god, what am I doing? Instinct there was just tap all the basics first, but that little heuristic doesn't work all the time. Sometimes you want to tap your dual lands instead of your basics. Now if they kill this, it just gets super punished. Grixis! Grixis isn't one of the clan colors. Whirlwind Adept. Alright, that card's fine. This one, they don't block profitably, so... I'm jamming. Oh, also they know about feet, so they just kind of can't even block this one, can they? Uh, flip it up. Five mana, get in some extra damage. What's my alternative? Probably going to bring all their morph. This has so much extra value. Yeah, I'd rather cast another spell this turn. Boom, 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 and let's be smart this time. Boom. Mystic of the Hidden Way. Okay, kind of glad I got that one off the field. If I'd known that, I would have just passed the turn and let him play it but that's fine hopefully I just draw another creature here to make my weapon master better oh bell and saddle brew my opponent's just playing like stuff they're not really in a clan four mana four or five ooh just guy charms nice mmm more blue mana or more red mana? I guess either unlocks the other from Swiftwater Cliffs, so we'll go and jam. Expect no blocks. One, two, three, four, five. I could flip it up. Or I could Jeskai Charm, just get rid of that Saddle Brute. Probably gonna Jeskai Charm Saddle Brute. Although I'm only trading off two damage for four damage. This isn't great. Yeah, let's just go ahead and Put this thing back on top. I'm taking at least four here. Probably not going to attack with this next turn. Depends on what other creature they play here. If they play a creature, of course. They missed some land drops, so they have all spells in hand. Tormenting voice. Okay. The post combat tormenting voice with the prowess creature. Discard in Jeskai Ascendancy. So they're just splashing black for Saddle Brute. They play a morph. Okay. So we know they have Saddle Brute in hand. Ooh, Cripple and Chill is a nice one. Alright, not going to attack here. That way I can try to eat a creature with the first striker here. Especially since if they want to play Saddle Brute and not just take 4 damage off of it, they have to attack one of these creatures into me. I imagine they're splashing black for something other than just Saddle Brute, but playing Jeskai Ascendancy means they're very likely Jeskai. Or I guess they could be splashing light for Ascendancy and be like legit Grixis for some reason. Oh, they're just going to straight up take 4. Alright, kind of cool with it. That means probably no attack. Let's cycle Cripple and Chill on your 4-5. Oh, Ice Feather Aven. I do like that. Barrage of Boulders? That's getting close to lethal, isn't it? 1, 2, 3. Uh, let's see. Next turn. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I guess they gain a life too, but sure. 
Yeah, so more likely Jeskai Splash in Black. Alright, let's go ahead and just morph this now, use our mana uh, green and white. Should we bounce their morph just to see what it is? Yeah, I like that idea. Battle Brew, I'm, you know, less worried about. Maybe try and get them to take another four. Looks like they might be morphing something in response. In which case, I might have just given them value off of their morph. This can give itself hexproof. Target creature you control gains hexproof talent in the turn. All right, that's kind of dope. Barrage of Boulders will kill that, though. Okay, I mean, they got me. We traded morph for morph. Ooh, Mystic of the Hidden Way is pretty good here, too. Let's play another morph. I'll play another morph here. Pass. Um, I'll hold up Barrage of Boulders. Is it creatures without flying? Yeah, just creatures can't block this turn. And then probably unmorph Mystic of the Hidden Way. If they attack, probably not doing too much blocking. Mantis Rider! Oh, they got the card I wanted. Jerks. Let's see what this attack looks like. Alright. That I'm not going to block at all. All right, tap out for another creature. Darn it. Ah, um, all right, let's go ahead and t morph this. At least that's something that can get in there. Ooh, Winter Flame. That's pretty good. So I really don't like trying to go for the win when my opponent has all spells and four mana up. So I'm probably just going to attack with Mystic of the Hidden Way. Get their life total just a tiny little bit lower. And then Winter Flame to like deal with this and tap down Mantis Rider or something like that. If my opponent hadn't left mana up, I mean, maybe I should be going for the win here. I don't even know that was the win. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, that wasn't even enough. Opponent's going to combat, so let's go ahead and try to deal with some stuff. Uh, I guess I actually tap Saddle Brute, right? Mantis Rider can hit me another time. I don't want to die to a random Jeskai charm. All right, let's go ahead and tap. Deal two to this. Actually, no, let's tap Battle Brute just in case. This thing has Vigilance. Yeah, okay. Tap Mantis Rider, deal two to Mistfire Weaver. Let him respond to this, hopefully. Nope, that just happened. Are we getting aggro yet with the big creatures? If so, I'll probably block one of them. Uh, that's, that's sketch. Aerostorm could kill me if I don't block. That's problematic. I'm going to just feed of resistance and block. I don't want to die to Aerostorm. That would suck. Uh, is this enough to kill them on their own? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, I could jump with the flyer and then go for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These two are lethal with barrage of boulders. Sure. Don't think I have too many other options here. I've got to try and go for a win here. I Spire Mantis. So many Mantises. No, play a three drop. All right. Yep. Oh, Cruise. That's tempting. It costs one mana. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I need eight mana to do Morph plus Barrage. Cruise would cost one and has a pretty likely chance of hitting an untapped land, but... I think I'm just going to try and go for the win here. If they have something to inter interact with, I can't stop them. One, two, three, four, five. It feels like they do. And then we'll cast Barrage. 
And if they have a way to interact, we're dead on the swing back. Go ahead and attack here and see what they got. I'll concede if they have interaction. Oh, did Barrage steal another one? Yeah, Barrage got another one. Told you this card was good. They just had nothing. Opponent's deck is good. Where were all these good cards when we were drafting? Back in my day. Boys, or this thing, doesn't even block their stupid 4-5. Monastery Fog actually seems good against this opponent. Since Venerable Lamasu is not here to punch right through it. Although, again, maybe Sage Eye Harrier is better than Monastery Flock. This Morse for Blue, though. Alright, what are we taking out for it? Hordling Outburst seems way. Watcher. I can't believe... I played so sloppy that game. Scaldkin... Doesn't actually kill most of what we saw. Kills Morphs, but... Scaldkin does not match up well when your opponent's 4 drops are 4 fives and 3-3 three, three flyers. That's not where we want to be. All right, Draftaholics, you're up. Hmm. Uh, this hand seems good. We got Ice Feather Haven mana. Oh, we just have straight up all of our color. No, we don't have white. But Winter Flame, and I can actually cast it, plus Hordling Outburst. All right. Kind of in for it. Seems really dece. Uh, lead off with Swiftwater Cliffs. We are going to need to draw a Plains at some point, but not until we draw white cards. Remember, we only have two white cards that come in uh, um, requiring white mana. All my other white cards are morphs. All right, what three drop you got? Oh, oh, it's a morph. Should I winter flame that now? Probably not. I didn't see any crazy creatures. All right, we drew a white card. Now we want white mana. As it is, Ice Feather Aven seems good. In case they play like a Bellwind Saddle Brood or something like that, like the be able to tap it. Maybe that's one reason to cast Winter Flame, so that they can't trigger Raid here. I'm not blocking. I like my Ice Feather Raven. Oh, another Morph, but no fourth land, huh? Ugh, we're not drawing particularly well. All of our draws have been lands and uh, whatchamacallits. I think uh, they didn't do anything different last turn. Probably just bounce one of these and attack for two. Or Hordling Outburst, not bad against these creatures. Winter Flame's pretty good too. What's well, actually just Winter Flame? Eh, we got a lot of options. Hordling Outburst might just be the best though. Then we kind of get a feel for what kind of morph they have. Any morphs that attack into these goblins, they're not too worried about. No blue or black mana from the opponent. Yeah, this is suspicious. This means trick for days. Just gonna block here. See what your first trick is. I'm also kind of cool trading goblins for morphs of my opponents on that plan. They're thinking about it. They're thinking about it. They morphed Watcher of the Roost. Oh, could have put one gun. Oh, and Ride Down. Uh, why, why are they randomly revealing this now? Oh, that's their only white card in hand. Okay, I got it. Yeah, so I still take a bunch of damage. They gain two life, but this is fine. Everything's cool. Jet Sky Charm. That's pretty good against an opponent who's mana screwed. Don't know if it's the right play or not. Oh, it's definitely not the right play because we can't cast it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Convinced myself. So here I'm going to Winter Flame, tap, deal two to their morph. Tap two here. Hopefully that's not something that morphs for four mana. If it is, uh, it's going to be pretty bad for me. Mistfire Weaver. Cool, with no blue mana. Alright, fine getting rid of that now. Comes the saltiest of the road patrols. Cripple and Chill is pretty good against Salt Road Patrol. Have to do it on like their upkeep or something though. Could also just bounce it. So now we can go Cripple and Chill plus Ice Feather Aven. Just gonna do this on their upkeep. 
this is sorcery speed only, so they can't outlast in response, but I don't want to give them an option to do it during their main phase. Um, never mind, I'm just going to bounce this. Yeah, that makes more sense. Let's go blue, green, red, bounce your dude. Get out of here, four drop. Yep. And attack for three. So, kind of even on the race. Um, two of my cards are dead and the last one's a land. I'm not feeling great about it. But, oh, and they drew blue mana. Boom, boom. All right, here comes the Salty Road Patrol. Probably still attacking, I imagine. Yep, let's just go and do this now. All right, we drew a plane, so we can Jeskai Charm them. Jeskai Charm could be good later on this game. Creatures? Ooh, Sting and Bell Strike's nice. Probably put that on this. That lets me hold up Jeskai Charm and Feet of Resistance. Feet of Resistance, not too great here, but kind of fine. Oh, yeah, you kind of need blue mana to cast blue spells. So they tell me. We are dealing slightly more damage to them than they're dealing to us, but Jeskai Charm helps us in a race. So we're really looking to hit just more creatures right now. Every creature we have makes Jeskai Charm just infinitely better. They have a Mantis Rider. Probably not attacking anymore. It says Vigilance, so we're not attacking anymore. Taking five this turn. Don't want to Jeskai Charm that. I'm going to probably use some combination of like Jeskai Charm and Feet of Resistance on my next turn to try and take these flyers out. Oh, the Master of Pearls, but we don't have double white. Um, let's see, if I tap three, then I can hold up one of these spells. All right. I'm convinced. It's okay. I don't want to get blown out in response to something, though. Hmm... Let's see if I can just give this pro white now before I block. Actually, I should block first. Yeah, if I'm going to lose it anyways. I might as well block first, right? One, two, three, four, five. God, Jeskai Charm plus Master of Weight Pearls would be insane. I don't feel like this is going to happen, but I'm going to go for it. I don't really love the idea of two for one in myself here. Uh, Give it pro white, I suppose. And kill it in response. No, that just happens. Oh, can't kill shot me. Can't kill shot me. Oh, we ate a Mantis Rider, and now we have a bigger flyer. That worked out nice. Opponent's still got five spells in hand, though, so I'm not feeling too great about it. But if I draw a Plains, I guess I need to draw two Plains in order to go Master plus something. Oh, bring low two. Get this out of here. We don't want our opponent to have a chance, so let's go ahead and kill this Morph before they have an opportunity to flip it. And then we can attack for uh, six. Disdainful Stroke, bring low. Disdainful Stroke, kind of not a great card. Uh, attack with everything and, and use Jeskai Charm to pump. Hopefully they just block with this morph. No, opponent's cool with it, but they have two. I think I'm kind of locked in now. <laughs> Red, white, blue. This gains me 9 life. They take 9, so 5 to 17. Means I can definitely take a hit back. Oh, let's just draw that Master of Pearls mana. I remember Disdainful Stroke being a fairly decent card. As you can see, there are a lot of super powerful cards that cost less than 3, but... Opponent's keeping the flyer back, too. So, worried about me potential pumping my way through this game. Didn't morph either, which is notable. I can cast in more more. More morphs. Cast in more morphs. They didn't have something to interact with the Feet of Resistance, so I'm not 100% sure they have something to interact here. They could have obviously drawn something, but maybe they have their own Feet of Resistance, or they could just be blocking, scared that I'm going to pump this. Um, Master of Pearls just does kill them with the fire on board, but I need to draw an untapped white source. I don't have a lot of white. Not blocking this time. More spells from the opponent. What you got? Just let me draw planes. Play a non-flyer. Let me draw planes. Ooh, Herald of Anafenza. Oh, come on, deck. 
Uh, get in for three, and then I'm probably blocking with my stupid goblin next turn. Just hoping they don't have a flyer. This makes a 1-1 one, one white warrior whenever you outlast it. So it's a one drop that gets bigger over time and also makes a little army of 1-1s. Uh, one, if they don't have a way to deal with Ice Feather Aven, then I just actually kill them, but I won't even need the second planes. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming they just drew that off the top. Well, now a removal spell for High Spire Mantis does it too. No attacks with the morphs. All right. Hit me, deck. Oh, I hate you so much, deck. Hmm. Fine trample. All right. Well, go for something next turn. I don't think we're in a great spot now. That last two damage is eluding me. Still true that if I get a red of high spire mantis, that uh. They drew a land for the turn, so unless they have a 6-drop that deals with Ice Feather Aven, they didn't draw anything to kill this flyer. Kind of worried about their morphs. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm at 12. I'm going to take one more hit off of this. Could just draw a Barrage of Boulders. They didn't morph, though. Jeez, deck hates me. All right, I'm going to go for Ice Feather Aven, Morph Master, try to kill High Spire Mantis. Could send the Goblin in there too, but this is probably something that can morph. Then we're on like Jump Jump, hope my opponent doesn't draw a Fire Plane. White, White, Uno, Dos, Tres. So just eat the Flyer is the goal here. And then try to kill him again with Ice Feather Raven next turn. Oh, they have something here? Oh, okay. So, 4 5. All right. Well, they're back in the position where they need to either kill me or find a way to deal with Ice Feather Raven. This creature doesn't do it if they untap it. Probably can't kill me with what's on board up or just block block. Actually, I'll probably just block Goblin on Glacial Stalker. Just in case, I don't know, like random green mana become immense, like Rattle Call Shaman. Alright, Outlast and Herald. Hmm. And just making me attack. Well, <laughs> I hope this works because we've drawn all lands for the last couple turns. Maybe they can gain life here. No, we just get them. Opponent's just making me play through the action of actually killing them. That's fine. Cool. So we went two and one. All right. Played against Jeskai three times in a row. No variation. You get to see the same cards over and over again. Hope you like Mantis Riders. But anyway, uh, can't be too disappointed. Uh, we made our play points back, and we got to play something different than last time. Probably going to be my last cons draft. I don't know if I'm going to get off of work in time to do one more, but if I do, I'll sneak in a third one. I'll post it online. And uh, yeah, cons is freaking great. I love it. And I hope Ravnica coming out being a gold set is similar to cons, because cons is one of the most recent gold sets or multicolored sets, and it's very well designed. Just great. Mana fixing all the way around. You can splash all sorts of stuff. The payoffs are there. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of playables. I love it. Uh, give it a try if you ever get a chance. If people at your local game store are like, hey, uh, you want to draft cons of Tark here? Then go ahead. It's really worth it. Um, anyway, that's going to go ahead and do it for our video. My name is Timothy here with Mana Rocks. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks to my new subscribers. Appreciate you all. You guys are awesome. Thanks for spending your time with me here. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, do it or else you will not get premium content like tapping white mana when you have white spells. Can't get that anywhere else. All right, I'm done <laughs> ranting now, or mumbling, talking, whatever. Thanks for joining me. My name's Timothy with Mana Rocks. See you next time.